can talk a little bit about uh, steroids, okay? If people think about steroids, they think about this. Fortunately, these are not the kinds of steroids that, uh, that we use for treatment of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. You're not gonna end up uh, looking like this by taking prednisone. So what are steroids? Steroids are really hormones uh, because you make steroids yourself. They come from your adrenal glands. And so the steroids we use are kind of, we call them analogs of the steroids that your own body makes. So they kind of do some of the same things, but they're made uh, synthetically. Two kinds of steroids, the glucocorticoids, are the ones that can reduce inflammation. And so ones we use for treatment of Crohn's and colitis are glucocorticoids. The other kind of steroids are mineralocorticoids, which have a lot of effect on your electrolytes and your fluid and how much fluid you uh, retain. But all steroids have a bit of both effects. So that's why the steroids we use can also cause a bit of fluid retention. They are like broad spectrum anti-inflammatories, like throwing a blanket over a fire. They, they, they really uh, put the fire out because they do all kinds of things to lower the immune system, not just flicking one switch. They flick the, maybe it's the breaker panel, you know, for the whole thing. So these are all kinds of things that have inflammation. So asthma, allergy, uh, all the list of potential things here, uh, arthritis, uh, organ transplants. So all kinds of situations where you need to reduce inflammation, steroids get used. Uh, in terms of what we use for treatment of Crohn's and colitis, the, in, in, if you're in hospital, we probably use something called methylprednisolone or sometimes hydrocortisone. These are IV formulations. Uh, the oral ones are prednisone and bedesonide, and there are a couple of common brands of bedesonide, Entocort and Cortiment, which get used. And the rectal enemas, which are rectal therapies, which can be enemas, suppositories, or foams, and, and some of you have been on rectally administered steroids as well. I will I'll point out that for the oral steroids, which are the most common ones we use, the prednisone and budesonide, the advantage of budesonide is that it doesn't have as many side effects because it uh, is usually taken as a pill. It, it affects the lining of the bowel, but after if it gets absorbed, very quickly gets broken down in the body, so it doesn't circulate and cause all these side effects that people hate. So budesonide is, is better tolerated. It's not quite as potent as prednisone, but that's, uh, if you're on budesonide, we, that, that medication is really invented for that purpose. So it has the steroid benefits with fewer of the steroid uh, side effects. So when do we use steroids? Steroids we, we love and we hate, and I'm sure many of you <laughs> hate them, but uh, they're really intended to be short-term treatments to put out the fire, short-term treatment for moderate to severe disease intravenously with the solumedrol I mentioned, orally with the prednisone, and we give oral prednisone, typically you give a high dose for a couple of weeks and you gradually reduce the dose over time. Uh, the budesonide uh, we just typically give for an eight week course and you don't, don't always need to taper it off. It can just be given as an eight week treatment for the same dose for, for eight weeks. Uh, second bullet is important. We really do our best to avoid extended treatment with steroids or repeated treatment with steroids because of the potential side effects. And so we don't consider these to be a maintenance therapy, you know. Um, there are a handful of people who no other choice. They, they, the only thing that seems to work is staying on a low dose of prednisone, but that's something we really try uh, to avoid because of the, uh, again, the safety issues. So what are the safety issues? <laughs> so a long list. Um, these are some categories. There's some cosmetic issues, which is, I think, what people hate. Probably the cosmetic and the psychological things are what people hate with steroids. It can worsen acne if you're prone. It can cause fluid retention, weight gain, uh, early bruising. You get those chipmunk cheeks, and some people get a bit of a, a, a thickening in the back of their neck as well. And you can get stretch marks uh, on prednisone uh, as well. Those things do go away if you, if you come off them, but they're unpleasant. Psychologically, people can get very emotional, labile, they can have uh, more vivid uh, dreams, can be quite disturbing for some people, and can certainly worsen depression in, in their, it's not common, but some people can even develop a psychosis on steroids. So mental health concerns with steroids are real. It can affect uh, uh, your bones, increase your risk of osteoporosis, particularly if you're taking it uh, long term. And you can get weak weakening of some of the muscles, something called steroid myopathy. And then a whole bunch of other things too. It does increase, they do increase your risk of infection. Over time can increase the risk of diabetes, high blood pressure, cataracts, glaucoma. And in kids uh, can uh, limit growth. So our, our pediatric colleagues treating Crohn's and colitis in kids 
really do their best to avoid uh, significant steroid exposure because it interfere with, with growth. So, um, you know, the uh, steroids are associated with, with bad things, but we do sometimes have to use them. Uh, the side effects are worse the longer you use them. And so uh, that's why we try to, to limit the course and use them when necessary, but, but uh, get people off them as soon as we can. But even coming off steroids, if you've been on steroids for a long time, some of you may have experienced this, uh, your body kind of gets used to it. And what happens is that your body stops making its own steroids because you're you're getting delivery. It's like if you keep having food delivered to your house, you eventually forget how to cook. And so you, you lose the ability to produce your, your own steroids. And so when you come off the, the steroid pills, all of a sudden your body can't uh, kick into action, making its own. People can feel very uh, unwell at that point, get very achy, a lot of muscle, point, muscle pain. You have to kind of ride that out uh, and put up with it. Uh, but uh, it's still not a reason to stay on steroids. You're better off uh, working through that and, and getting off them still. So how do you minimize steroid use? Um, well, you, you can't always avoid them, uh, but you no, know, sometimes they're necessary, but think about whether other options are possible. So steroids when necessary, but not necessarily steroids. Use them for a defined period and plan uh, what we call taper, which is a, a gradual dose reduction or, or just stopping them. Uh, and I think the important thing is every time you take steroids, you and your uh, healthcare provider really should be thinking, okay, you needed to use steroids, that's fine, but what can we do in your maintenance treatment to prevent that from happening again? Do we need to change your maintenance treatment? Do we need to change the dose of your maintenance treatment? Uh, what can we do better so that we don't have to do this again? And I think that's a very important point. <clears throat> 